So I've made it to the summit of Moose Hill in Sharon. And that way eventually goes to Newburyport in my usual this away, that away routine. I'll probably run that section at another time, maybe soon. That goes out to the wonderful bluffs where there's actually views up here at the top of Moose Hill really I haven't just noticed it much in the way of views but that's okay I've noticed red chipmunks scolding me it's a different noise from the red squirrels I mean and there goes one now it's a different noise from the chipmunks from hickory trees. And there's the evidence that we're on the summit of Moose Hill. And as if on cue, there's one of those scolding red squirrels I was describing. My presence is intolerable. Huh? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm out of here. I'll run the gauntlet at you all, scolding as I go. Oh, mushroom break. We seem to have the moorings, kind of a platform for maybe a prior fire tower. Just more of the interesting and funny ruins and relics that lurk in the Massachusetts forests. Some kind of generator for the fire tower, which looks like it's also carrying everybody's cell phone stuff, which makes sense. Hopefully, there's some revenue involved. This would be Dead fire tower. It's quite a fire tower. There's the Bay Circuit Trail Turn Indication Marker. This is about the main panorama. We got a contrail. <laughs> anyway. And yeah, this is from the days. I don't know if this is still active or not. I imagine it is. We'll find out at some point. There's the likely vehicle access road for this thing. And Bay Circuit descends over here. Let's another look at it. You see they have the 
must be bringing propane up here. This is part of the Mass Audubon Summit Trail. This is the original sanctuary for Massachusetts Audubon. First set aside in like 1908 or early 1900s, maybe 1912. And I've had it ever since. There. Now, beginning our descent. There appears to be some kind of reroute. So in a way, it's more useful for me to cover that. I have the April 2012 edition of the Holy Writ, and it is subject to change. There's all kinds of fidgeting going on and second guessing and so forth. But this part isn't going anywhere and won't be subject to much of any change. And the part behind me Coming down from Walpole has been pretty unchanged over a while. See, this is sort of your closest equivalent to a view. If I poke through this stuff, I might see something, but who cares? I'll be up in Holt Hill probably tomorrow, my favorite place in that neck of the woods, so I'll be pretty well covered for views. Lots of ancient cedar around here. It looks like it's been getting its bark chowed by deer or something. As we get further down, we'll encounter a deer enclosure experiment. See if the ratio native plants to invasive plants changes if you keep the deer away. It's poor deer, they've become the, the thing that everybody is concerned about. Lyme disease is evidently rampant Everybody's been nailed with it. I don't think I have thus far, or maybe. I'm just not that susceptible to it, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> it's been a problem. And deer are the culprit. Much of it has to do with they no longer have any significant predators. When I was a kid, deer were hilariously rare. Seeing one was terribly exciting. You know, because they were hunted a lot. Their numbers were kind of in decline like most other wild things. But now, they're problematically abundant. 
<laughs> and chowing Mrs. McGillicuddy's petunias. Pasta. They're pretty bold. I have evidence of one in Cambridge I ran into on a video trip. So, there's a lot of deer study going on, I guess, to cut to the chase. <laughs> <laughs> 